Started out 1-0 in the NFL, and now it's time for the Week 1 Best Bets. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and we are back to talk some more pigskin. That's right, with a nice 1-0 start, thanks to the foot of Isaiah Likely being a little too big. That's really what it was, and we'll go over that quick recap in a bit. Three important pieces of info for the channel. Friday's game, best bet on the game in Brazil. We already did that with the Thursday night game, so go check out that video that came out yesterday. Um, and then no MLB video for Friday. We are just not having enough time. This two-sport thing, uh, this is it's uh, obviously really busy, so I'm still going to release some bets. You will see them on the community tab of YouTube on X and on Discord, so be sure to go there as we went 2-0 uh, on Thursday, so that was nice. Let's end the week strong there. And then the final one, if you're looking for NFL player props, we do a separate video on Friday night. And uh, I'm going to give you all my favorite player props. Today is just the game bet. So that's what I got for you today. If you missed the season preview video, I'll give it to you right now. The Super Bowl prediction, Lions versus Chiefs. Obviously, we give out a lot of futures in that video too. But my Super Bowl predictions is Lions, Chiefs. First first video, I just want to let you guys know. Let's see if I can nail it. Uh, that would be pretty sweet. But before we get into anything... Our partner outlier is just absolutely awesome. The time is now to sign up. If you guys are waiting, I don't know what you're doing because if you want to be a good long-term sports better, you have to have the right tools. And outlier is that tool. I've told you guys before, if I'm not partners with them, I'm still using this app because it's extremely helpful. You get in-depth research help, so you get insights, you get all these hit rates, trends, anything that you need. Um, it's just been unbelievable. So go click that link below in the description. Start your free trial and just try it out. See if you like it and then uh, go from there. But just want to let you know, go check out Outlier. And if you see any graphics, it will be from Outlier. So now I will also be on the Kyle Kerm show Sunday at 1130 a.m. Eastern uh, for an hour and a half leading up to kickoff. We're going to break down every game, give our best bets. It's going to be a lot of fun. So come join us. But just like MLB, we are going to have an NFL fun fact. So let's get into it. It's a quick one. Larry Fitzgerald, the stud Hall of Fame wide receiver, had some of the best hands, obviously, that we've ever seen in the NFL. And the crazy part, the crazy stat here is he actually has more tackles than dropped passes in his career. I guess that's a lot of picks by his quarterback, and then he tackles the guy. 41 tackles and 28 drop passes. That is absolutely insane. Now, in this video, we're going to recap Thursday Night Football. Just one bet. Should be quick. And then we're going to talk Week 1 trends. That's right. They are freaking back. It's one of my favorite segments. I love trends in the NFL. I think they're huge. They went 115-81 and 81 last season. So let's see if they can have another good year. And then we'll give our best bets for Week 1. Give you our trends parlay like we did last year. And then finish it with the recap. So... Long intro. Thank you guys for listening, but just had to get all the housekeeping stuff done. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Help this channel grow. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as we're on our way to 28,000 subscribers. Enough of the mumbo jumbo. Let's talk some freaking football. And it starts with the recap. There it is. The first bet of the season and the first winner of the season. Chiefs minus two and a half gets the job done. And man, did that get tight at the end with Isaiah Likely's toe likely on the out-of-bounds line that was absolutely beautiful um some things happened that i i was i actually kind of saw coming which uh was always good to see but the ravens o-line struggled not just because of all those penalties but they just struggled in general at the end they were fine because the chiefs were tired um uh, but they uh you saw the ravens just a lot of dink and dunk they didn't trust their o-line they did not want to go deep a lot um and so you saw that that's going to be a problem obviously for them this year but obviously lamar jackson is a stud derrick henry I'm sorry to say, guys, he just doesn't look that explosive to me. He just doesn't. He can run over some guys here and there, um, but he's just not going to be the answer at age 30. He's going to have some good plays, obviously, but what a win by the Chiefs. Xavier Worthy is the new toy in Kansas City for Mahomes and them, but I will take it because the Ravens were going for two, and that would have been a guaranteed loss if they would have hit that touchdown. So we'll take the break and, uh, and the first winner. So that's what we got for the recap. But before we get into the best bets for the first time this season, Let's talk some trends. All right, let's get into the trends. If you're not someone that likes trends, well, if you blindly tailed them last year, you won quite a bit of money, like I said. Um, but we'll go over these. This is week one trends. Obviously, week one's a little different. There's no travel spot or anything like that. But we're going to go over this. Week one overall trends since 2014. Divisional underdogs in week one are 36-15-1 against the spread. That is unbelievable. That would be the Indianapolis Colts, the Carolina Panthers, and the Las Vegas Raiders. That is a huge 
huge number, 36, 15, and one. Divisional home underdogs, um, 14 and four in week one against a spread that is only the Indianapolis Colts. And then divisional home underdogs of one and a half or more points are 16 and three against the spread. Again, just the Colts. Since the merger in 1970, you've probably already seen this one. Quarterbacks pick number one. How about 422 and one straight up? That is horrendous. That is, they have won four of 27 games. I guess there's a tie in there. And seven of 20, uh, a seven and 20 against the spread in week one. If you're doing that, you're taking the Tennessee Titans, fading Caleb Williams, um, and and because obviously he was the number one pick. And then also in that game, Titans went under their team total in seven of eight road games last year, 20 and a half points. How it, obviously these matter a little bit more as the season goes on, but how much does last year carry over to this one? Um, all Houston Texans road games went under the first half total last season. That's pretty crazy. The total this year in the first half or this game is 23 and a half. And this one, we don't usually include a player prop, but I'm going to. Josh Allen threw an interception in 14 of 17 games last season. You can get his over half a pick against the Cardinals at only minus 110. Falcons, 2-8 and eight against the spread in their last 10 games as a favorite. Again, Kirk Cousins, new quarterback, new team. But if you like that, you're going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers against the spread. And then Carolina and New Orleans have a couple trends all going to the same one. They have gone under in seven straight meetings. They have an average combined score in those seven meetings of only scoring 32.1 points. The Saints themselves are under in seven straight home games. And the Panthers last year ended 9-2 and two to the under. Everything about those trends points to the under of 41 and a half. So that's the first page. Let's go check out page two. As you see on the bottom, 115 and 81 last year. Let's see if they can do it again. Again, if some of these don't hit or they have a bad week, I am not giving these bets out to you. I am just giving you the trends, just so you guys know. But the Miami Dolphins, 18, 7 and 1 against the spread in their last 25 games as a home favorite. They are minus three and a half against the Jags. Giants gone under in 14 of the last 20 games because their offense absolutely stinks. The total in that one is 41 and a half against the Vikings. Um, and then Chargers, they've gone under their team, their game total in 12 of the last 15 games. It is 40 against the Raiders. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh, a whole new team, so we'll see. Um, Broncos, 13 and 4 ATS in the first quarter last season. So if you like that one, you're going to take Denver plus a half in the first quarter. Cowboys, Absolutely bad as an underdog. 0-5 straight up, 0-5 against the spread in their last five games as an underdog. And to go with that, their opponent, the Browns, 6-0 ATS in their last six games as a favorite. Cleveland minus 2.5. And, and then Tampa Bay went under in 7-9 of nine home games last year. The Bucks home games average a total of only 35.4 points. They now play Jaden Daniels uh, and the Commanders, and the total in that one is 42.5. And the final one, the Detroit Lions, 10-4 and four to the over in Dome games last season. That's not just at home. That's all Dome games. If you like that, you are taking the over in the Lions-Rams game. So that's what we got for you for all the week one trends. Hopefully this is a, a you know a decent part of your handicap, but I never recommend you know only just making all your bets because of trends. It's just another piece. So that's what we got for the week one trends. And now it is time for the best bets. All right, this first one takes us out to Indianapolis where the Colts host the Houston Texans in an AFC South showdown. Texans minus three, total in this game, 48 and a half. My first best bet, give me the Colts plus three at minus 118 on DraftKings for a half unit because I'm just doing half units for the uh, week one. You saw it earlier. Uh, all the trends point to the Colts, like everything. It's absolutely crazy. Um, divisional underdogs, 71%. Divisional home dogs, 14 and 4 ATS. All of the good stuff. Um, but there's also one more. How about in week one since 2006, non-playoff teams versus playoff teams, which is what we have in this game also, in these divisional matchups, if you take the Colts, you would be 35-13-1 against the spread in that situation, 72.9%. Divisional underdogs that are non-playoff versus playoff teams. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and again, just part of it and just stuff. I'm a nerd. I love this kind of stuff. But um, now, actually, for the game, um, Colts are finally healthy. They got a lot, They had a lot of injuries last year. They were dealing with Jonathan Taylor with a holdout and then some injuries. Um, they are pretty legit, and their O-line is legit. But two matchups last year, Colts won 31-20 to in their first meeting. Anthony Richardson left with a concussion because I think he did every single quarter. Um, and then the second meeting, they lost 23-19. to So... Um, by no means were the Colts being dominated by the Texans last year. In fact, in those two games, the Colts outscored them 54 to 39. Now, in those two games, let's talk about the run game for the Colts. Zach Moss had 18 carries for 88 yards, and then Jonathan Taylor, 30 carries for 188 yards, and that was behind a banged up O line. Um, the Texans struggled uh, trying to stop the run, that's for sure, and I think they can control the game here with their run game. 
Um, so uh, Texans, they're getting a ton of public money, obviously. They are the darlings, one of the biggest darlings to start this year. Everybody is all over them. Now, let's talk about a worry. The Colts secondary versus the Texans passing game, it's not ideal. I don't love the Texans uh, secondary. They got some young players. We'll see if they can step up. Um, but what I do love about the Colts defense is I think they have a pretty elite D line that nobody's talking about. Um, if you don't know, Grover Stewart is a run stuffer. He's a stud. DeForest Buckner, a guy who is not only a D tackle, but can get pressure from the inside. And if you already watched me do a season preview, you know, I like the Colts a little bit. Edge rushers, Quiddy Pay and Ebucom uh, combined for 17 and a half sacks last year. And then, oh, by the way, they didn't need it, but they drafted the number one edge rusher in college. Um, with Latu, and that was their first-round pick. They added him to the mix. They have a deep and very good defensive line. Um, so if they can get some pressure or quick to the quarterback, it's obviously going to help out that secondary. So um, I just love this matchup. I know the Houston Texans have Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, Nico Collins. Um, I get that they have some weapons, and they will pass the ball. They'll do a decent job at it. But I think plus three at home as a divisional underdog, I see this game, if anything, it's a close game, maybe a three-point game. If the Colts lose by three, they do. We take the push and move on. But um, I think the Colts have a good chance to win this game. So um, I just need Anthony Richardson to, one, stay healthy, and two, not make any bad throws or turn the ball over. But give me the Colts, plus three as my first best bet. All right, who's ready to fade another darling of the NFL? We head out to Chicago where the Bears host the Tennessee Titans. Bears minus three and a half, total in this game, 44 and a half. My second best bet, I'm fading the Bears. Give me the Titans plus three and a half at minus 104 on FanDuel for a half unit. If you want to, you could buy it up to four. Um, it is a key number, obviously. You get like minus 115, minus 118 right in that range, which you could do. Um, but you saw the trends on rookie quarterbacks. They have mightily struggled, especially number one picks. Even C.J. Stroud last year in his first two games, their offense scored nine and 20 points. They were 0-2. That just happens, guys. It is a very tough transition. And I don't want to hear about any preseason stuff because that doesn't matter. The speed is different in preseason. The players are different. Um, but besides the trends, I just think Caleb Williams is going to have some growing pains. And that's common. It's going to be fine. He will have to adjust to the speed. This is a quarterback who did lose five games last year on USC. And I'm not saying it's all his fault or anything like that. But he did lose five games. He is not like the next coming of Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, in my opinion. Um, could he have a good career? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sitting here saying he won't. But again, this is game one. Um, and the Bears offensive strength, as we know, as we all know, is their wide receivers. They got a great trio, but that's going to be a problem against this Titan secondary. Now, for those of you who have no idea about the Titans, you just think they're rebuilding. They got nothing. They're actually pretty loaded on defense. Let's be honest with it. Let's talk about it real quick. They added the best DB in all of football. Legereus Sneed from the Kansas City Chiefs is now theirs. And their number two DB is an absolute stud, Cheeto, Chidobe Awuzie. Um, opposite him, they have two stud quarters. One of the best uh, DB corners. I think they can slow down DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and these boys. And then they just got linebacker Ernest Jones, a solid veteran. And then they added safety Quandre Diggs. We know here in Seattle, he's a pretty decent player. Um, and then they still have Jeffrey Simmons in the middle of that D-line, obviously. I think they can be pretty good. Um, and I think it's a good matchup for this one. So Titans offense, the biggest issue last year is their O-line. My goodness, if you watch them, I mean, Levis would snap the ball and literally have three guys in the backfield every time. And you know what they did? Unlike the Bears, they made a ton of improvements. They added a top five center in the NFL, Lloyd Cushenberry. And then they used a number seven overall pick for J.C. Latham, a tackle. And uh, they have a decent trio of wide receivers themselves. How about DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, and Tyler Boyd, who I like from Cincinnati last year. Um, it's going to come down to whether or not Levis, you know, can just take care of the ball, play well, and uh, and make the plays when he needs to. But um, Bears worries for me. Uh, I don't like them in the trenches trenches this year in both sides of the ball. Uh, let's be honest. And it, and obviously that's important to me because I talk about it a lot. But they struggled last year and did not do much to the O-line to help. It was really surprising to me. They have a bottom 10 run and bottom 10 pass blocking offensive line last year. That is not ideal for a rookie quarterback. And their D-line lacks a lot of pass rushers. They struggled last year. They're a bottom five team of pressure to quarterback. And I don't think they brought in enough to just make them all of a sudden a good pass rush team. So I think they're going to struggle in the trenches against the Titans. Um, and then overall, on this bet, I just think three and a half is just an overreaction a little bit to the Bears' hype. Maybe because they're on hard knocks. Maybe it's Caleb Williams, whatever it is. Um, but they still have weaknesses. They still have a rookie quarterback. One of the receivers, Keenan Allen, has been playing on the Chargers his whole career, now coming over, trying to learn this system. Um, and then, like I said, it's a good matchup. Titans have uh, one of the best cornerback duos in the NFL. Um, they're better in the trenches, so on and so on. The jury's still out on Levis. He's got a strong arm. Let's see if he can be better in year two now. But he does have a better O-line. 
a good wide receiver core. So those kind of things should help him improve. So give me the Titans plus three and a half, as I think they have a shot to win this game. And that is my second best bet. All right, before we get to my third best bet, we got to tell you about this great promotion of Bet365. Guys, the best time to join onto sportsbooks is when you start a season because you get promotions like this. You got two choices. Bet5, get $200 in bonus bets. You go sign up using the link below if you want these promotions. And you bet five no matter win or lose. You're getting the 200 on bonus bets. That's obviously the one I would pick. But you also have this option if you want to take a big chance. And uh, you get up to $1,000 uh, in bonus bets for a safety net. So if you want to make a huge bet, if you lose it, you get all that back in uh, bonus bets up to $1,000. So now is the time to join a bet365. If you are, are you in one of the legal states at least? Um, so I just want to make sure I tell you guys that because I want to get you guys the best deals. It's always helpful to have multiple sports books. Uh, so you can look at different odds and compare and get the best price and all that. So, of course, you must be 21 years or older to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER now. Back to the bets. All right, this third and final bet. That's right, final bet. But if I have an ad play, it'll be in the pinned comments below on Discord and on X. So just want to let you know because I do have some ideas still waiting to hear some injury news and stuff. But this one takes us out to the state of Florida, where both Florida teams are playing each other. Miami Dolphins hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Dolphins minus three and a half. Total in this game is 49. It's a little different bet, but I like this one quite a bit. Both teams to score 20 plus points at minus 115 on bet 365 as a half unit. You can get it on DraftKings as well. Let's talk about this. Obviously, I need both teams to score 20 or more. That's it. We have a total of 49 points. Um, let's talk injury news. And part of the reason why I like this. For the Miami's defense, they have Jalen Ramsey, their stud corner. He is very questionable for this one. We don't know if he's going to play. He's not going to be 100%, that's for sure. Bradley Chubb, pass rusher, is going to be out. He's on the pup list to start the year. They lost Christian Wilkins, their D lineman from last year in free agency. It's just not pretty for this defense. I, I'm not a big fan of their defense this year. Um, and now let's talk to Jags, 20-plus points first. This is going to be the harder of the two legs, obviously. But their team total is kind of all over the place. DK has it at 21.5, FanDuel 23.5. I think it should be 23.5. Either way, I'm taking those both down to only need over 19 and a half. Yep, hash brown math. But this team started 8-3 and three last season. You may not remember it, but they had injuries to Trevor Lawrence. He's hurt every game, and uh, they just completely stumbled down the stretch. But they were one of the better teams to start the year. In that 8-3 and three stretch, they only played three true road games. I think they played London or maybe London twice. In those three true road games when they were healthy and playing well, 31, 31, and 20 points. So on the road doesn't mean much, especially since it's in the state of Florida. Not a big deal for them. Um, but the Jags did score 20 or more points in 12 of 17 games last season. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of those were unders were against really good defenses, not like as much as Miami. But um, Dolphins struggled a bit versus tight ends also. So I think Evan Ingram could have a good game here uh, as one of their weapons. And uh, Trevor Lawrence is coming in healthy. I think he has a big year. I I'm, a, I'm a Trevor Lawrence believer this year. Um, and, you know, he's got some good weapons on the outside, got Evan Ingram as well, and now without Chubb, maybe uh, Jalen Ramsey. I just think this Miami defense lacks a lot of playmakers, in my opinion. So um, I think 20 points shouldn't be that big of a deal. They got Travis Etienne. I think they're going to make this work um, and uh, and score 20 or more, and this could be one of those high-scoring games where they both hit close to 30 as well. But now Dolphins offense, obviously one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. The trio of Devon Achan, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell. I mean, they can score on absolutely any given play. Offensive line is just okay. Nothing special to me, but they get rid of the ball quick. They have a lot of pre-snap motions, end arounds, um, screen passes, things like that, just to get guys in space and let them use their speed. But uh, Dolphins scored 20 or more points in 13 of 17 games last year, and two of those four were under in the final two games of the year. They were banged up as well. Other misses, Casey and Philly. Casey, obviously, the number one defense last year in points allowed. Week one last year, if you want to know how they came out, well, the game went to 70 points. They won 36 to 34 against the Chargers. Their team total is set at 26 and a half for a reason, guys. I just need 20 for them. I would be shocked if the Miami Dolphins did not score 20 points here. So really, it's just saying I need the Jags to score 20 or more, in my opinion. So that's what I got for you. Um, I'm really just to kind of summarize all of it. I'm high on Trevor Lawrence here. Um, I'm not really impressed by either defense. I think they lack a lot of playmakers. The pass rush for the Jags, I think, will be decent. Um, but other than that, I, I don't love their secondary. We're going to see how that shapes up. But uh, I like it. I like the offenses to score some points here. And I, I think it probably goes over 49. But I just need 20 from each team to cash this bet. So that is my third best bet. Uh, if you want a quick just lean I'm thinking about right now, 
If Jamar Chase doesn't play, I kind of like the Bengals team total under 24 and a half against the New England Patriots. Patriots offensively obviously will struggle, but defensively, uh, they still got a lot of guys. Christian Gonzalez coming back, um, being hurt last year and things like that. So I, I do like the Bengals team total under. They usually start slow as well, but we'll see if Jamar Chase plays. I just want to throw that last lean out there. But that's what I got for all three best bets. And now it is time for the trends parlay. All right, if you followed us last year, you know we did a trends parlay. So here's the deal. I'm going to pick three of our favorite trends that we just gave out earlier in the video, and we're going to make a parlay. I'm going to throw a quarter unit at it, and let's have some fun and see if we can get a winner. So here we go. Under 41.5 Panther Saints, under 41.5 Vikings Giants, and the Browns minus 2.5. So I'm going to talk briefly about each one and what trend we're tailing uh, in case you forgot or decided to fast forward through the greatest segment ever of week one trends. But Trends for the under 41 and a half in the Panthers Saints game under in seven straight meetings between these teams, averaging 32.1 points Saints under in seven straight home games, Panthers nine and two to the under um, to end the, the year last year in the last 11 analysis. Both offense stink. Both offenses do stink. I don't trust either quarterback. I don't trust either offensive line. I do like Carolina plus four in this one. Almost made it a best bet, but instead I kept out of it just in case. Bryce Young and this offense has not figured it out yet. Um, yes, they did add Deontay Johnson, which I think is a big addition. Um, but there's just a lot of uh, lack of explosive playmakers on both sides. Chris Olave obviously is a stud. Um, but these guys play low-scoring games for a reason. They get they know each other. They're divisional games. Um, and they just, I think we're going to get another one. There's nothing about these offenses or these teams or these coaches that say all of a sudden this is going to be a very high-scoring game. So I'm going to take the under 41.5 Panther Saints. Next one. Under 41 and a half Vikings Giants, two games that I can't wait to watch. Just joking. But the trend here, it's a simple one. Giants gone under 14 in the last 20 games. Um, that's because their offense stinks as well. But this game is ugly. It's Sam Darnold versus Daniel Jones coming off a big injury with two weak offensive lines, two weak running games, and not many playmakers on offense. The Vikings do have more playmakers, obviously. Um, well, I'll just, I'll take that back a little bit. We got Malik neighbors. I think he's a stud. We'll see what he can do with Daniel Jones in that offense. And then Justin Jefferson, obviously a beast Addison, a pretty good player. So we have some decent wide receivers in this game. Um, we'll see what Sam Darnold is all about. We haven't seen him consistently that much lately. Um, so as long as we don't have a lot of turnovers in these first two games, setting up easy points or pick sixes and all that kind of stuff. I think we get another grinded out defensive game in this one as well. So give me the under 41 and a half. And then the third one, the Browns minus two and a half against the Cowboys in Cleveland. The trend, Cowboys 0-5 straight up and 0-5 ATS last five games as an underdog. Browns 6-0 and ATS in their last six games as a favorite. Now the analysis part of this one, um, I think the Browns defense is going to slow down this Dallas Cowboys offense because that's just what they do at home. This Cowboys old line is weaker this year, and I, this is not a good start to uh, for them. Uh, Browns defense at home this year. We talked about it, or last year. We talked about it last year. It was absolutely insane. They struggled on the road at home. They gave up 13.9 points per game. Under two touchdowns, by far the number one home defense in the league last year. Miles Garrett and these boys, I think, are going to make life pretty hard on Dak. And then Deshaun is obviously the wild card. We need him to play well. We don't know what Deshaun we're going to get. Are we going to get it from four years ago or maybe somewhere in the middle? He needs to play well, obviously. Um, but I think it's a good matchup for him. Cowboys are coming in very injured on the defensive side with Bland being out for a while. And I think there's one or two other guys as well. So um, Brown's O-line is one of the better ones in the league. So I think they can handle the run game with Jerome Ford. Obviously, Nick Chubb is out right now. But the big one also, how about the Cleveland Browns last year? Not only were they elite defensively, elite against the spread, the number one home against the spread team, 8-1. and one. That's right. They covered the spread at home, eight out of nine games at home. I'm going to ride the dominant home team here, the dominant home defense, and take the Browns minus 2.5 to go with those two unders of 41.5. And that's going to be our first trends parlay at plus 5 67, I believe. Yes, 567. I'm going to throw a quarter unit on it. You guys can obviously tail this one, maybe pick some of your own trends or add whatever you want to it. But this is just something fun we do. Hopefully, we can win some money doing it. But that's what I got for you for the trends, the best bets, and the parlay. And now let's take a look at the recap. All right, here it is. I got three best bets and the trends parlay. And again, all player props will be in the Friday night video. So we got more bets to add. Colts plus three for a half unit, Titans plus three and a half. I'm just back in the AFC South, I guess. Uh, that's a half unit. And then Jacksonville, Miami, both teams to score 20 plus points at minus 115 on DraftKings and Bet365. That is a half unit play as well. And then that trends parlay the two unders and the Browns minus two and a half at plus 567.
Let's get some winners to start the week. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm excited for our player props video because I love doing NFL player props, as you guys probably already know, because I like to do MLB and NBA player props. But um, it's an exciting time. I am really pumped up for this weekend. Told the wife and kids to get out of the house on Sunday because I, I, that's just what I need. So we'll see if they do. But uh, thank you guys for watching again. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Hope you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.